Here we go. I'm good right here. It's not this type of show. Thank you. Have a seat, everybody. Let's start the show. Good morning. Here we go. Welcome to the show, everybody. She's still a little under the weather, so give her a little extra love. It's Shane Wells, everybody. Give it up for Shane. Good morning. How are you doing? me for whatever I may say or not say today. It's all right. You're medicated. It'll make the show far more interesting with you on medication. This is it true. will, yeah, yeah, yeah. You look fantastic, though. You would never know that you're not. I just went to the well. dressing room. There's makeup tricks, you know. Oh no, please! You're naturally Lots beautiful. That tricks. I've seen you without makeup. It's the same thing. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Well, you know, I mean it. Look at you. I mean, you could you have Brussels sprouts on your head and still be beautiful. But anyway, <laughs> um, by the way, I want to. I always love. It's just so sweet. People bring me all sorts of gifts, and it's just so sweet. I'm just appreciative that people come to our show. Uh, like this, you know, people, I got an email yesterday. Someone asked me about this little angel. A very nice woman sent me uh, this angel. She was going through a rough time earlier this year. And she said that our goofy little show brought her a little bit of solace during the, the, the trial. So she said that uh, I was kind of like her guardian angel. So I told her that I would keep this on my desk through the holidays. And then a nice woman today brought, look at this, a little Jason show, uh, st- a little, a little st- look at that. Let me, I want to get her name. And I love a good handwritten note. Like, I'm not going to read this to y'all. It's to me. But, I mean, I'll just say thanks to Lisa. So, thank you, sweetheart. I really appreciate it. We'll put her, we'll put that by E.T. Now, got to tell you, I tell you guys everything. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, back when I was a kid, I had a crush on a woman. (laughs) Settle down, back row. Settle down. (laughs) I said it was when I was a kid. Thank you very much. No, but my, my very first crush, other than my little, uh, my girl that lived in my neighborhood, Tanya Kreiner, who was my first kiss, but my first crush was a woman. What? Aaron, yeah, I dated women, Aaron, yes. <laughs> but my first crush on television was Nicolette Sheridan uh, from, was, uh, she was on Knott's Landing which I watched every Thursday. And then recently for you youngins, she was Edie Britt on Desperate Housewives. Well, I still love her. She's my ultimate, like I, I, I would marry her. If I wasn't married, I would marry her. And, and, and I love her. So we were in Chicago this weekend and I forgot to tell you guys this. She uh, was on Instagram and I just, I happened to respond to something, you know? And I thought, you know, why not? I'm gonna, so she's like, who's watching TV right now? And I said, I'm drinking champagne right now. And she liked my, my post. So I got, I got excited even by that, you know, because it's your crush acknowledging you. But then moments later, I'm drinking another little glass of champagne, and I got an alert on my phone that said, Nicolette Sheridan is now following you. Whoa. And I thought. That's a big deal. Next, she's going to be sliding into your DMs. I, I, I'm telling you, if she, there's nothing better. Like, I could walk out today be eaten by a bear, and I would die happy. I I would, seriously, this is it. Nothing else to do. I've got a, I have a talk show, that was a dream. Nicholas Sheridan's following me. I could die happy now. Anyway, yeah. Okay. By the way, we have a great show. Uh, You know, I love Nicolette, and I fell in love with this woman a couple days ago. I am so excited, please don't turn the dial. Uh, You don't want to watch The View anyway, they're just screaming at each other. Uh, Keep it here. Uh, because Surya Bonali is here, Olympian, ice skating icon. She is here in the studio. I, I can't wait to talk to her. Yeah. And again, it's all thanks to Shane. Shane hooked us up on this one, so thanks, Shane. Okay. I have this in my hand for a reason. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go, everybody. Let's do it. Shouldn't probably put my mouth on this. No. That's pretty disgusting. Anyway, let's get started. With just about two months to go until the Oscars, 
girl, they don't, they still don't have a host. We don't have a host of the show. Or will there be a host? Well, on The View yesterday, former Oscars host Whoopi Goldberg said it would be a mistake not to have a host because the show needs someone who can kind of guide the audience. I, I keep going back and forth on that one. She also kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of threw her hat in the ring to do the show again. Because for if you guys don't know, you know, Whoopi hosted it, I think, four times, five times, four times, and did a really good job. Whoopi was, Whoopi is great at hosting the Oscars. She really is. She's funny. She's like a triple threat. But, okay, but listen to this. But last night, like four hours later, The View tapes at, I think, nine. She went on Colbert. Uh, she seemed to change her mind, telling Stephen she had another idea for host. Look at this. You're a four-time Oscar host. Mm -hmm. but there is presently no Oscar host. Has anybody called you? <laughs> no one's even called no, no. you. No, no. But you but actually know Ken, how to host. There's so many people Ken who host things. I want Ken to do it. Who? Ken John. Oh, yeah. I speak very well. Ken would be great. He would be brilliant, you know, yeah. and it would all. Now, oh, I'm wiping my eyes. Sorry, I had something in my eye. Crying. Now, if, in case you, that clip made me cry, girl. Very I'm emotional. crying. Very emotional. Back row's making me emotional today. I'm just telling you, yeah, yeah. Uh, in case you missed it, Whoopi is endorsing actor Kim Jong to host the show um, from uh, The Hangover. He had a show on ABC. Very funny guy. Now, Stephen also asked Whoopi why no one seems to want the job. Listen to her answer. This is fascinating. Movies. Why do you think nobody wants to do it this year? Because I think it's not so much that nobody wants to do it, but, you know, with social media, you used to only have to worry about newspaper critics saying stuff about you, but now you got everybody in the mother. Well, I didn't like the way his teeth looked. <laughs> you know, and he's not funny. He's, oh my God, he was so boring. I watched the whole show. He was so boring. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. Very true. It's, it's true. I didn't even think about that point, and, and I, 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 I get it. I said, I've been very open about it. I, the minute I saw that clip, I thought, mm, you know, you always try to be relatable uh, to something that you watch, and, and I thought about it. I, you know, during uh, the first few months of this year, I went through a really rough time, probably the roughest in 20 years in TV. There was just a rash of really ugly comments kind of coming my way, homophobic comments coming my way, um, and just really mean, like I can take constructive criticism, whatever, Jeff, in the control room. But anyway, <laughs> the executive producer's going, no, you can't. But anyway, uh, and I am sensitive. I know, know, you know, hashtag know thyself. But I will tell you that social media, it really does kind of diminish the joy out of doing these types of jobs a little bit because no matter what you do, if you put yourself out there, there's going to be Betsy, you know, sitting at the computer, wait, wait, you know, that's an ugly tie or, you know what I mean? It's everybody has their 15 minutes now that they can voice it. So I get what we'll be saying. Next in the dish, we're learning more about Kathy Lee Gifford's decision to leave the Today Show. Now this, uh, this news broke, yeah. I'm telling you, the audience is very emotional today. Uh, this broke, this broke during our show yesterday. Apparently, Kathy Lee wanted to leave last year, but was begged to stick around another year. Here's a dealio. Kathy Lee made the announcement during, here it is, during yesterday's show with, uh, with Hoda. Now, according to page six, NBC asked her to delay the decision for a year following the controversy involving Matt Lauer because she came to them in 2017 and was like, get me out, you know, I want to be done. Well, that was right when Matt Lauer was uncovered to be Mervy Pervy Mervy, and then they had to get him out of there. So they're like, no, 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 there's enough turmoil, can you wait? So Kathy Lee plans to focus more on her book, her music, mu uh, movie projects, and she's been on the Today Show for 11 years. Well, that's a good run, right, Shane? What run. doesn't she do? She does everything. Books? She does, I didn't know she did music. Oh, yeah, she was, oh yeah, she's a, she, oh, that's, yeah, she was the she was the singer on the classic game show Name That Tune. Wow. Yeah, and then she sang on those carnival commercials, <laughs> which I love. The carnival, yeah. I love something else. I love those. I've referenced them every day this week. Jeff, we should play one of those. I love them. Anyway, um, she's gonna be fine. Uh, you know, and that's a, that grind. I mean, she's she wants to enjoy the rest of her life and, and doing that every she's day. She's earned it. She has earned it. Yeah. Now, yeah, Kathleen's staying until the spring. Now, who's gonna? Re Who's going to replace her? What we were talking about in the meeting, what's the rumor now that... Jenna Bush. Jenna Bush Hager is going to remove her. No, here's what they, this oh. is what they should do. No, oh. I like Jenna Bush Hager, I do. I do, I love Jenna Bush now. I, at first I was like, Mer, but now I like her. But uh, <laughs> this is what they should do. Keep that hour that Megyn Kelly was in the exact same way. 
They have 8,000 8, acres in that, and that. Leave that. It's doing well in the ratings. If I was NBC, I would move Kelly Clarkson's talk show to that final hour oh. and just leave and leave and leave Hoda, leave Hoda in just the seven and nine. Let Hoda concentrate on that first two hours. If I was running the Peacock, I would do that, but I'm not. Anyway, next in the dish, we're learning more about. We're learning about uh, more of what it takes to keep a plot of a big movie secret. This is nuts. Mark Hamill is speaking out about the high-level security involved in the next Star Wars movie. Now, even if you're not a Star Wars fan, this is not really about Star Wars. This is just fascinating. Mark tells Entertainment Weekly, listen to this. He receives rewrites for Episode 9, which is filming right now. He receives these on dark red pages because that way they can't be copied. The problem is, he says, it gives him a headache to read off the red paper. And he also can't keep a copy of the script and said, this is crazy. Instead, some, somebody from the studio will fly the script to him, wait until he reads it, they'll stand right there, and then take the script back. <laughs> Mark Hamm, just like this show. Yeah, that's yeah, what he just yeah. We guard our secrets. Yeah. Mark says he still has to shoot most of his scenes for the movie, which comes out a year from now on December 20th. Now, again, spoiler alert, you know, Luke is, you know, passed on, um, you know, but yeah. So he's going to be a force ghost. He's going to be like Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I've been nothing but a series of hoots and clicks for you. I have for no the last, idea what you're you talking have, about. No, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Anyway, it's all right. I was on board for the script stuff. I know. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll explain it during the break. Thanks. Grab another cup of coffee, everybody. We have a great show. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Soggy bottoms are the least of the worries between Bake Off superstars Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry. Find out why the former co-judges haven't spoken in months, and it has nothing to do with a bad bake. I wonder what it is. I secretly hope it's something safe. Then, skating with Surya. Did you know that we have an Olympian in our own backyard? I'm hitting the ice with skating icon Surya Bonali to find out Hello. what brought her to Minnesota and if she can teach me to skate. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and it's a fashion show like no other. Our friends from all of America are here with fabulous outfits based on some of your favorite holiday movies. The Jason Show will be right back. big year for music so we went down to the 30 Rock Plaza and asked people who had never heard some of this year's biggest songs to make their best attempts at singing them. The result was pretty interesting. Have you heard of the artist Drake? I've heard of him but I have no idea what he does. Can you sing In My Feelings by Drake? Do you love me? <laughs> Are you riding? Kiki, do you love me? My roof looked like a no-show. Got diamonds by the boatload. Damn, damn, my God, I'm about to go. But I'm like, oh, can't really touch nobody with all this jewelry on you. My roof looked like a no-show. Got diamonds by the boat. Come with Ronnie Romo for clowns and all the bozos. Oh, I love it. Welcome back. That's our Late Night Rewind, Jimmy Fallon testing people on this year's most popular songs. More just for you now. One of Fallon's guests last night was Jennifer Lopez. J-Lo is promoting uh, her new movie, Second Act. She got emotional. A little emotional Jenny from the block. Talking about her man, Alex Rodriguez. Look at this. He's come into my life and really contributed in such a way, he's so supportive, he's so loving. He's, he's one of these people, he's like shine, just like be the best. You know, some people try to like, dull you down or, or you know, like squish you down and he's so not like that and it's just so refreshing it's just a beautiful thing he's just a very generous loving spirit soul he's yeah he is. oh good i like it yeah no. I, um, <laughs> uh, none of us believe you what <laughs> yeah i know I know. Come on, I, he doesn't have a great reputation. No. I mean, is that a nice way to say it? I know, but you know, I said it a couple weeks ago. You know, people evolve, Shane. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but you know, I just. I hope she's happy, but, and I hope he's good to her. But girl, I got stories. People don't change. I got stories. Wait, what? You have A Rod stories? 
<laughs> anyway, moving on. I'll tell them. I'll, I'll tell you in the commercial. Yay. I'm just joking. I won't. Yeah, yeah. No, I love her, I, and I'm glad he's he's a good guy. I mean, you know, there was he was kind of a, a little dirty dog for a while. You know what I mean? He was uh, anyway. Next to the dish, it seems. No, I mean, you know, he was. Yeah, he no, was for a, sure. Yes, I was agreeing with and you. And if I looked at it like a Rod, I would too. Yeah, next <laughs> to the dish. Yeah. Just joking. It seems, yeah, it's it seems things are so. It seems things are not so sweet. I'll be able to talk. See, I talk about a Rod, I get flustered. Uh, <laughs> things aren't so sweet uh, between former Great British Bake Off judges Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood. This makes me sad. I wanted to believe they loved each other. Now, the two starred in several seasons of the hit show before Mary quit the show when it changed networks. Well, get this, everybody. Reports are Mary snubbed Paul at a recent food, of Brit a food event in Britain, refusing to be on the same stage with Paul or even take a picture with him. British papers, British papers say the reason may be because Mary is close to Paul's ex-wife, keyword ex. Because the 52-year-old is now dating a 23-year-old, and Mary, <laughs> hashtag no judgment on age differences, yeah. But you didn't leave somebody for a younger no, version no. of themselves. Yeah. Uh, no, and Mary isn't happy with how he treated his ex. It's kind of like the Simon Cowell thing, you know. There were a few friends of Simon that kind of sided with, remember when Simon, uh, how was it? He he messed around with his best friend's wife or like something like that. Yeah, it was a, another like dirty Shania dog. Shania Twain, doesn't she have one of those stories too? Yeah, Shania's manager slash husband, Mutt Lang. Um, so, wow. And again, why would you name your kid Mutt? You know what I mean? You're never going to get that on a mug at Cracker Barrel. No. You know what I mean? But no, Mutt, how was it, Jeff? Tell me in my ear. Sh Mutt cheated with Shania's best friend. And then Shania married her her best friend's ex-husband. Whoa! Yeah. Mind it was, it was blown. Like, it was like a spouse swap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're good, you know. Oh, by the way, Shania, yeah, Shania is also on that list. Yeah. We digress. I know, we digress. Still to come, everybody. She's a figure skating legend from France, now teaching young skaters here in Minnesota. After the break, I'm getting a skating lesson from the one and only Surya Bonali herself. And she's joining us in studio. We'll be right back, everybody. Stay with us. Back in a moment. Figure skating is one of the most popular winter sports around the world and one of the most memorable Olympic figure skaters. Now, listen to this, actually lives right here in the metro. Surya Bonali is a three-time Olympian who grew up in France, but now Ske is living here in the Twin Cities. I decided to meet up with her, and, and when I say get a lesson, I put that in air quotes. She put up with me, I should say. Look at this. It's not a good sign when you don't even know how to put on the skates in front of an Olympian. I'm sure it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> you know. Okay. How should I do it? Okay, so. It's a little bit loose here. Now okay. hold on. I'm gonna make two bunny ears. Not my shiniest hour here. Oh. This is already embarrassing. I had to be taught how to lace up my skates. Well, lucky you, today's not slippery. <laughs> so it's gonna be fine. We made it special for you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, let's go out. Okay, just walk easy, like you know. Walk easy, okay. Like you would walk in the street, okay. Okay, and like just, that. Uh, and just be careful. That's exactly how I walk in the street. <laughs> <laughs> no one there, so enjoy it. You can close your eyes whenever you want. This is about what I'll do. <laughs> That's good. Come here. Hey, this I'm one? actually, I'm oh, actually. Okay. Upright. I, I mean, you know what I mean? Good. You know, I haven't yeah. fallen yet, so that's, no. I mean, that's a win. Because I'm sure sometimes you get people on here that fall right away. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> but you can put your arms here so you really look like a real figure skaters. You know, you put your arms on the side and just like, yeah. Like that? Or like a hockey player, just, you know, more like. I'm probably more a figure skater, just FYI. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Can you try to go down and just do that? 
So do you like when people call you a rebel? No. I didn't think so. Our staff who loves you kept saying, she's a rebel, she's, and I go, I wonder if she likes that. No, actually no. I never felt that uh, anger and feel like tough. I think that's the biggest misconception about you? For sure. Yeah. For sure. That must be hard. I would, it's that, hard yeah. because, you know, for dating, I used to have some guy who say, hey, I, didn't even I think saw you on television. I know you're really tough. The first date is like, okay, I want to see and test you, how you are. And after I was like, yeah, you're actually super fun, super cool. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, thank you. And I'm like, yeah. So it's why I can't I didn't even the... think it would affect you dating. Yeah, yeah. We do sport because it's, you know, peace of mind. We do this for the fun. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Very good. I, I don't know what that thing. was, but I did something there. I don't know what that was. What would be the first thing that you would teach someone? Usually we teach you how to fall and how to get up. Usually it's like the thing. So usually, Seriously? Yeah. If you want to try. I, I do. I know. Like, so bend so, your knee first. Okay. Oh. Okay, bend your knee. It's okay. Oh. I'm, why am I afraid to fall? I'm afraid to learn how to fall. That's pathetic. Okay. okay. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. I'm very afraid. Come on, you can okay. do it. I can do it. I can do it. Oh, is that like a walker? Yeah. Shut up, that's like a walker for skating. Yeah, this is what we usually use for beginners. <laughs> so, so, just push it. Push it? You know, since you're healthy, you're not, you know. So, that's good. Okay, put one knee down. Why am I afraid? Oh my God, I'm sweating. I'm so nervous. Getting close. Okay, Getting come close. in, get your knees down. Come, can I come back to this? Okay, Thank do you want you. to try to spin? Nope, I'll try to fall. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your arms open. Okay. And you walk, 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 and walk. Oh, I'm spinning. Walk. Yeah, walk, 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 walk. walk, walk. Yeah. I can hold you. Okay, hold me, right? And you say, one, two. Very good, it's called bunny hop. I did it. That's a Blades of Glory move. Okay. Why don't you try to go backwards? You go, yes, backwards. Yeah, okay. okay. So this is our grand finale. Grand finale. And, and try to go down. Oh, and okay, that's about as far. <laughs> and it's a seven. <laughs> wow. Well, that proves I have no vanity. Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot more I want to chat about. With I, I got to tell you, I fell in love with her. Uh, meeting her. She is fantastic. We're going to chat some more. She's here, everybody, including what she thought about being the subject of an entire Will and Grace episode back in the day. She's in our studio. We'll be right back, everybody. Back after this. Many people uh, dream of competing in the Olympics, but only a very, very small percentage ever make it. My next guest competed in not one, not two, but three Olympics, becoming one of the most talked about figure skaters in the world during the 90s. As you just saw, she now lives and coaches here in the Twin Cities. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up, please, for Surya Bonali, everybody. Hi. Okay. We didn't get into it in that in that piece, but how in the world did you 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 ended up here in the Twin Cities for love, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Big thing. Big change because you yeah. came from Vegas. You came from Vegas to here, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Obviously, you're from France, but you came you came from Vegas. Mm -hmm. How did you adjust to that? Uh, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it looks like I have a short memory. Every winter, I'm like surprised, like, no, it's not possible. It's not that, that is cold. that cold. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's it's going to be that cold. Yeah. You know, for, for those who, you know, I, I got to tell you, I became, you, when I knew I was going to do the interview, I, I was working in TV during the 98 Olympics, and I remember you, and I remember the coverage, but I went back and just looked. When you look back at that time, I mentioned three three Olympics, what stands, what do you think of first when you think of your Olympic career? Well, you know, Olympics, it's dream for an athlete, whatever, what kind of sport, whatever you do, it's like the big things because, you know, it's only four people can do this in a national team and become an Olymp Olympian is like so amazing. But, you know, there's a lot of work to do. Yeah. Sometimes four years or 
to 10 or 20 years of work prior to that event. So it's really stressful actually. And anyway, you feel so overwhelmed and excited to be there. And it's like this big reunion where you can meet so many athletes all over the world. You know, there's like 42 countries coming together and 200, over 200 athletes, you know, for the Winter Olympic Games. And you're just like, wow, yeah. it's like amazing. And your, your, road, your road to the Olympics was, you were telling me when we were skating that it wasn't like you dreamed about this. Tell everyone your skating career started because of your, your mother, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my mom was a, you know, a teacher and she was teaching figure skating and because of her, I didn't have to pay figure skating. So it was kind of my, my kindergarten, you know, I just here yeah, come and hang around and just practice and, and then, I become good. But yeah. I was good in different sports too, you know, gymnastic and tumbling. I was in a national team as well. So I was kind of like, you know, already you know, pre-made pre to be a good athlete anyway. What age were you when someone noticed you that said, you know what, this is more than, this should be more than a hobby for you? Uh, I think around 12 years old, I met, just bump into the national coach from Paris and uh, come to my rink in Nice, out of France. And he said, told my parents, I say, you should go to Paris. And we were like, you know, when you live in a French Mediterranean by the ocean, he never think to, moved ever to Paris. It's yeah. like, hello. It's like almost coming to Minnesota. Why would come to Minnesota? You could come to <laughs> Cali no, California no, or Hawaii. I know what you mean. I know what you know, mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weather, you know, weather, weather wise, everybody. You know, weather wise. Yeah, weather yeah. wise. It's yeah. like, well, you can go Hawaii or Minnesota or Nice yeah. and Paris. I'm like, really? Yeah. And after, you know, you know, it's for your job. And you know, there's so much opportunity. Paris is like so big if you want to do something good because National Training Center are over there. So you know that you have to make, to do the you know, big move. So and it was supposed to be only for one year, try, and I ended up 10 years there. So, 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And then, so then you get going, then you get to the Olympics and anybody that, you know, you hear, and we're gonna talk about Will and Grace in a minute. Anyone that Googles you, you know, the first thing that comes up is, the backflip yeah. and does that drive you nuts that that's that that's like no. when you when you google you that that's the first thing that pops up or well you know i'm excited because i know i'm the one who create this move this jump but in a way i'm like here it know, is here it is everybody if you I, haven't seen it look at that <laughs> oh. yeah. yeah so i'm excited about it because i know i did it so i'm very I'm proud of that but in a way I'm like I've been you know in a world scene and I went to the Olympics not just because of my backflip you know I was able to do some spin I was one of the best spinner on the world jumpers I did some triples combination it was my my you know my special skill of doing those triples as a girl and uh, and I did very young so it was a big surprise and I was able to do some quadruple. I was the first woman to actually try quadruple in competition. And I was actually super young, 17, my first time when I ever tried. So I was You like, are more than a backflip. Yes, yes. 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 So, gonna... yeah, so, and I, I can say that I was very complete because I couldn't say I was just a jumper or a spinner. I was very, I was able to You were to the whole package. Pretty, pretty much. Yes, you yeah. were. <laughs> yes, you were. Okay. Siri so is going to stick around more with this Olympic favorite when we come back. Back after this, everybody. The whole package. More with my new friend, Siri Bonnelly. During, you know, uh, I said that you were the whole package, but you know, the, the Olympics, I remember the coverage of you. We talked about this on the ice. We didn't get a chance to show it. You know, uh, you were viewed, you were viewed differently than some of the other athletes in, in those years. Did that, were you aware of it at the time? And did it, did that impact you in your performance? Well, you know, when you're an athlete, you're kind of in your bubble. You don't know what's going on. People come media do interviews and do stories about you, but you don't know really what's have to happen or afterwards. On afterwards. So I was really in my Bible and my job was just to go perform, practice a lot and do my job, 
try to make my, my country proud and my te national team. And that's it. I didn't know that people were talking kind of funny on the side. Yeah. <laughs> so I just now, I think I can hear and I go sometime on, you on YouTube or on Google and I look at some interview and I was like, really? Why? I'm like, come on. Well, we like, were, so. This was the moment that I fell in love with you during mm -hmm. our interview when you were talking about how, and we won't say the network, but the, the network would cut, would do a shot of another athlete and they're standing and they pick them at the perfect moment and they're sitting pretty and they look great. Yeah. And then they'll take a shot of you at the worst possible Yeah, moment. I'm probably like very stressed and focused and it's like, do not talk to me, please, I'm serious. And I'm like, boom, it's getting me. I'm like, why? Yeah. Because, you know, you know, when and I, every oh, yeah. shot of you was like that. I know. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I'm not like supposed to be like a tough, tough, you know, I'm strong. I work out a lot, but, you know, I'm petite. I'm only 5'2. What can I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> oh, you can do a lot. You are very strong. <laughs> Well, you, you had such a following because you really, you, you, you stood up for yourself that you became an icon and it was never more evident than in season one of Will and Grace in 1998 when you were the focus of a great episode. I love this episode Ooh, yeah. where, where Jack, did, did, you, did you? I heard about it, but I never saw it. And, uh, oh, yeah, well, yeah. here, this is from 1998 where Jack and, and, and Grace go to see, I think, Champions on Ice and they talk about you. Look at this. <laughs> She's French. She's powerful. She's black. She wears blue eyeshadow and does illegal backflips. She scares me. I crave her. <laughs> That's funny, actually. That's pretty funny, I Sean know. Hayes. I know. She's black, she's wearing blue eyeshadow, she scares me. <laughs> and I can't get enough. Yeah, anyway. I know, I do like to have, you know, makeup. I don't know why, you know, I dream. I think you had blue eyes. I know. I think you had blue eyeshadow I when know. we met. I know, my dream will be to have blue eyes, but I guess I'm born with brown eyes, so can I do <laughs> like something? <laughs> I know, but I'm like, you know, that's why my fiance have blue eyes. I'm like, oh, at least it's something that, you know, my dream come true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, had, you had seriously never seen that? I've heard about it and people were laughing about it and I'm like yeah I thought somehow I had a phase where I already had blue eyeshadow so I'm like so, yeah. yeah what's the best thing you know moving <laughs> into the new aspect of your life uh, do, what's the best thing for you about coaching is for me it's like kind of relaxing because you know when you skate for yourself and perform at this high level it's extremely stressful you know and it's a lifestyle that I choose, but in a way it's really difficult because you have to travel all over. I mean, I was traveling all over the world. I was in an airplane every day going, to, you know, which country, or different states, and different arenas with different size. You don't know, you just have sign a contract and here we go. You wake so, up in your hotel room uh, yeah, in Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah and sometimes you're in Japan the next day, I mean, China. It's like, okay, sure. Okay, let's go. Let's pump it up. You know, yeah. okay. It's like, get ready. Pretend the life is beautiful, even though you have like the jet lag and you just fell asleep until they call 15 minutes. Let's get ready for the show. And you're like, let me sleep. I need to sleep. Yeah. But hey, and after it's like, the yeah. show must go on. It's like, yes. Get the blue eyeshadow on. <laughs> get the skates on. Anyway. So, yeah. So it's why I'm like, you know, with experience, you, you know, it's getting better, but it's stressful. And you know that people pay lots of, sometimes lots of money to watch the shows. So my thing was always to give my best 100%, no matter what, if I was sick or injured or something, I always want to do my best and had at minimum four triple jumps, sometimes in a performance and two backflip. So every night after 70 shows, you know. You're, you're tired. Yes. yes. You can, you know, yeah, beat up. But so it's why now teaching is more relaxing, you know, sadly, uh, you know, I don't take care of myself anymore as much like I used to do. <laughs> but, you know, I did it for so many years, so I'm like, okay. It's I time to take a break. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Eat well. a chicken finger. You can eat some bad food now. <laughs> yes. Well, I got to tell you, we got to go. You're, you're just one of my favorite guests that we've had on the show, and oh, I just, it's been a delight to meet you. Well, so thank you for well, being here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Sorry about yeah. everybody. After well, the break. Yes, you are. Yes, yes after you. the break. Whenever you can want to come and skate in Braemar, you can come. All oh. of you. Oh, please. yes. 
I can, yeah. I'll, can come, I'll take another lesson. After the break, they're the movies we love to watch this time of year. Why not take some fashion inspiration from your holiday favorite holiday movie? Sarah Rogers from the Mall of America has some ideas when we come back. Back after this. Welcome back, everybody. That's Surya. Wow. From one of my favorites to another one of my favorites. We all have a holiday season movie that we love and we have to watch every single year. So why not take some inspiration from that movie or holiday TV special for your winter wardrobe? We thought this was a fun idea. Here with some outfits inspired by classic holiday movies is our good friend, Sarah <laughs> Rogers from the Mall of America. Hi, sweetie. Hi, Jason. How great with Surya. Oh, oh my God, I oh, love her, I love her. She is special. Okay, I love this idea. This is so much fun. I haven't seen these outfits, so. It was fun for me to work oh, on this too. Is, oh, I bet this was fun probably to put, put together. It really was. Okay, Sarah, who do we have first? Let's start out with our fabulous White Christmas. Oh, there it is. Yes, Rosemary Clooney. Uh, Jason, I just had to look it up. I mean, how often do you run into the Clooney name? Yeah. She is related to she George is, yes. Clooney. I didn't know She's that. She's aunt, yes. Yes. His aunt, yeah. yeah. Look it, at that dress. Isn't that something spectacular, right? And black is always classy. You can't go wrong with that. And now, wow. I know. Look at Mariah. Okay, Mariah is wearing this stunning dress I found at Macy's. It's by Calvin Klein. I love the sequin yeah. bodice on that one. It has a chiffon tiered skirt. The ruffles uh, are really fun too and feminine. And then I gave her um, a beautiful ankle strap shoe, all from Macy's. And I couldn't find the gloves. And so instead, I know in fashion right now, I'm seeing a lot of faux fur. And I found this beautiful uh, faux fur here by Tahari from Macy's too. That is beautiful. Isn't that she's stunning? Yes. As they say in the song, Mariah's on fire. Yes. yes, she is. I like that little leg slip. I little do too. Action I too. like that. Right, bloop, mm -hmm. right there. There we go. Mariah, thank you so much. Thank you, Mariah. Okay, now let's take a look. Okay. Let's take a look at the next clip. This is, we talked about this movie yesterday, The Holiday yes. with Cameron Diaz. That's right. Yeah. She is so classy, right? And in the movie, she wore a lot of ivory and black and a lot of shearling. So I found a really fabulous look that I think you can pull off this holiday season. Let's see the model. It's on Come Elizabeth. On Elizabeth. Oh, I like this. Isn't that cute? Oh, I like that a lot. So it's a faux shearling jacket. This also happens to be by Calvin Klein. I love the Sherpa trim on this one. You're seeing that on the collar. Sherpa is just faux shearling. Okay. And also on the turn back cuff on this one as well. I gave her an ivory turtleneck. Uh, which, you know, really spoke, I think, to a lot of the looks that Cameron wore. And jeans by uh, Levi's, and then fun boots. The high shaft boot is back again, really popular, so it's not only old, it's new again. Elizabeth looks like she's moments away from getting her Christmas card photo taken. Uh -huh. I love that, look at that. <laughs> that looks amazing. Now that is a winter outfit. It really when is. When you think winter, that is a winter outfit right it there. It truly is. Thank you, Elizabeth. Now next. Okay. Uh huh. I'm gonna be very curious of how you do this next one. Let's look okay. at the clip. The next one is a Charlie Brown Christmas. <laughs> now we're going with Lucy, y'all. We're going we with Lucy. Are. Yeah. We love Lucy. Lucy is wearing the bright colored coat, and I thought that would be easy to kind of show this holiday season. She's got on that beautiful yellow, uh, but I found a oh, stunning cute. red. I thought yellow is fabulous, and I did see yellow at the Mall of America at the Kate Spade store and Nordstrom, but I thought a lot more women can wear red yeah. and would like that. And Yellow's this one, hard. it is for some people. It is I do hard, happen yeah. to love it, but it's not for everybody. Whereas well, every most color people, looks good on you, let's be very well, clear. Yes, yes. Yes. But this red coat, I also liked the price on it. I found it at the Agassi store, and it's under $35. Oh, seriously? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really nice. So ultra affordable. Underneath, I fell in love with this sweater. I found it at the L.L. Bean store. It's a snowflake pattern, and it's a wool blend, so it's going to help keep you nice and warm. She's got on great skinny jeans from the Gap, but then those boots. They are the Doc Martens. I'm just loving Doc Martin this season, and I thought they were a nice play on the skates. Yeah. Oh, look right, at you, Sarah. Right? Yeah. But also, white boots are 
everything this season. White it's boots. A big trend. Okay, write that down, everybody. White yes. boots this year. Yep, that's a hot trend. Okay. Going forward, you're still I'm still seeing it. So I thought that would be a fun look. And I love the little black beret uh, for her hat, and uh, I found that at the gap. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you very I much. I know, Lucy. <laughs> okay, love one more. Her. Now this is, uh, let's look at the clip. This is Zoe Deschanel from Elf. Yes. Okay, oh, that's cute. Isn't that cute? Uh, I'm gonna be curious of what you're doing oh. with this one. Uh, okay, wait until you see what I did here. Let's bring out Lexi because. Lexi, come on out, audience. Give it up for Lexi. On. Oh, cute. I mean, isn't it cute? Yeah. I went with the colors, Jason. I found this at the buckle. And really? I just, uh huh. I love the colors that, that Zoe was wearing in the Elf movie, and our beautiful Lexi is pulling it off. You've got the beanie with the uh, palm on the hat, uh, the top of the hat, and then the marled yarn also really played back to the movie. The burgundy underneath I thought was really fun. I found that at Macy's, that's North Face actually. And then that canvas coat with the faux fur. It's a nice coat with a little quilt lining. Great jeans from the buckle. They've got a fun little detail on them. And then those boots. Are those those boots, are from great boots. the buckle. Yeah. They're Sorrel. Love the wedge heel on that and the lacing detail. Really just tied it all together. Absolutely. Let's bring out all the models all together. Give it up, everybody. So good. I love every one of them. All the looks there. Don't forget, you can find all of these looks at the Mall of America. And don't forget to take my, my tip. I'm telling you, if it's cold and you can't find a parking space, do the valet. It's worth it if you have a car full of people complaining. I'm saying, I'm it's give that tip every time. I did it last night. Anyway, yeah. Sarah Rogers, everybody. We'll post this segment on our Facebook page a little bit later. We're going to wrap up the show. Shane's coming back when we come back. Stay with us. I did it last night. I was like. Again, I want to say thank you for 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 booking uh, for booking Surya. Yeah. She li literally, yeah, fangirling. Well, and I I know I should tell that. What's funny is a little behind the scenes thing. Shane and our executive producer Jeff, who I talk about a lot, you two for like the last week and a half have been so <laughs> excited about this interview. Every time I would see you, you would talk about this interview, and I said, y'all should just do the interview because you're way. <laughs> And I, I, like, Jeff rarely writes questions for me because usually, you know, I can do it myself. But he's like, okay, now this is da -da 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 -da. Like, oh, my goodness. You, but now I get it. Now yep. I get it. She We're was very passionate about her. I, I understand. Now, <laughs> right? I, now I get why. And now I get why. Yeah. Well, and I'm calling Jeff out. Jeff is so professional. This is one of the things I love about Jeff. Jeff doesn't like to bother people. When we have stars here, we try to keep it classy. We don't bother the stars when they when they leave. We don't do autographs or anything. You know it's a big deal. The segment was over, and Jeff came out of the control room yes. to get a picture with Surya. Has that ever happened? Uh, I've seen Jeff get. I've seen him get maybe three or four times. In it's like a four big years. deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's a new way to find out if you've been naughty or nice over the past year. A company called uh, Zopa.com created a system that examines all of your tweets, all of your tweets, and lets oh. you know. If you, where you fall in the naughty or nice spectrum. Now, of course, we had to try it out. Now, we don't know this. We don't know how, how Shane and I rank. The producers did this without us knowing. So let's take a look. I'm up first. According to, according oh. to Zopa.com, I've been 63.1% nice. That's pretty good. Well, it's because we are, we are monitored. Our tweets are watched by our big boss. <laughs> so I don't tweet anything mean on that. Yeah. Now Shane's turn. Let's see. <gasps> what? No. Wow. I... Wow. I'm, I'm going to blame the fact that I do traffic in the morning and I tweet about crashes, which are not nice. That has no. nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow on the show, Thrifty Traveler is back. He's sharing the latest deals, answering your travel questions, and explaining why everyone should take more vacations. And don't forget, we are now on YouTube. We've moved from Hulu to YouTube. 
Subscribe to our channel right now. Go to YouTube and search for The Jason Show. Look for my little face drinking the coffee and subscribe today. Full episodes, same day, which is great. That's going to do it for us right now. If you're a kid watching that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. On behalf of Naughty and myself, bye, everybody.